I'm gonna reveal some valuable color grading tips and techniques in this video that'll get your videos from looking flat and emotionless to punchy and professional. This is another episode where I color grade your guys' videos that you sent in. In previous videos, we had some fun turning these shots into something a lot more impactful. And today we're gonna work on this shot sent in by a talented musical artist named Rohan Kapoor. Rohan, your name just reminds me of uh, Lord of the Rings because Riders of Rohan. I guess I'm kind of nerding myself out a little bit here, but yeah, it's, it's a good name. So before you color grade, it's always good to look at your shot sequence and notice what color and light you have in them and how you might be able to tweak them. And then ask yourself, what kind of mood and vibe are you going for? In other words, what emotion do you want your viewer to feel? In this example, Rohan is talking about heartbreak in this song, so it's not particularly a beat or joyous. So we know we're gonna want a look that's moody with a lot of our colors swinging more towards the cooler half of our color wheel. But at the same time, we wanna make sure that he looks good, he pops and he stands out. So let's bring up our color wheels and we're not gonna pull down the exposure or brightness of our shadows because they're already sitting really low. If we go any lower, they'll go below zero IRE and we'll lose detail in the darkest parts of the shot. And I'd like to keep as much detail as possible in those areas for this shot. So let's actually bump up the brightness of our midtones. And since skin tones lie in the midtones, this will brighten them up as well. And you may notice that our Luma waveform is showing that we're blowing out parts of our highlights since it's going past this 100 IRE line. If you're a beginner, this basically means that detail is being erased in the very brightest parts of your shot. Normally this isn't great, because you want to keep detail in your shots, I assume. But since detail was already erased in these areas in camera anyways, and since making sure that he looks good is more important than making sure that these parts of the shot aren't being blown out even more, we will let this be. Let's increase the saturation or the intensity of color of our entire shot by using the global saturation slider. Let's rename this layer contrast sat and let's start creating a look by using one of my favorite correction types, the color curves. Let's keep the red curve up and remove some of this warmth that I'm seeing in the shot by pulling down towards the shadows. Doing this subtracts red from your shot, which adds its opposing color to the shot, which is blue. So it adds cooler tones to your shot, mostly in the shadows, but also affecting the midtones and the highlights slightly. Now let's see if we can use our Luma curve, which adjusts the brightness of our image to add a bit more contrast. By lowering the brightness of our shadows on this curve, we can keep our black point from going below zero IRE. That's because this point right here that we haven't touched is the black point in our shot. And let's create an S curve by raising the brightness of our upper midtones, which will brighten him up a bit more and give the shot more pop overall. If we push up on our black point here, we can even create more of a milky shadows look that I think looks pretty good for this shot as well. We can rename this layer look adjustment and let's bring up our handy HSL curves. Let's crop into his skin to check to see if his skin tones are accurate. And they are not, it seems. They're swinging more towards yellow. So let's use our hue versus hue curve to change the color of any color we want. Select the color of his skin and swing our curve until his skin lines up with the skin tone line. No matter your race or ethnicity, accurate skin should always fall on this line. And the perfectionist in me is just noticing a little too much color in this area of his skin, in this shadow part, which would naturally be slightly less saturated with color. So let's use the orange versus sat curve. This curve lets you adjust the intensity of color of any color based on how bright or dark that color is. So if we select this area, which lands towards the shadow side of the curve, and we gradually decrease the saturation in this darker area of his skin, we're removing the intensity of this orange in an area of the shot that shouldn't be so intense, basically creating more natural saturation levels. By the way, if you're tired of not knowing exactly what you're doing when it comes to color correction and grading, and you want your videos to have the same quality look as your favorite creators or films, check out my color grading masterclass. It is approved by Apple, it is loved by students, and if you're thinking, ah, another YouTuber course that's not worth the money, just check out all the real testimonials on the website at the very least. It's also on sale at the moment as well. So yeah, thank you for the support on the channel. Back to the video. We could rename this layer, Skin Adjustment. Just to keep things organized, let's add another HSL Curves layer. 
If we use the hue versus hue curve to select this green and just cool these hues down by making them more cyan, we're basically just fine tuning our shot to swing our colors to be more similar, essentially getting our shot to be more of a complementary color look. That's a look that uses colors that oppose each other on the color wheel. So it's useful for this shot because we have the warm color of his sweatshirt and his skin, and then we have the cooler tones of the night sky and all these blue lights in the background. While we're in this curves layer, we might as well clean up our blacks by going to Luma vs. Sat and gradually decreasing the intensity of color of the darkest areas of our shot by pulling down here. Notice how this allows us to keep our cyan and orange color grade, yet clean up areas like his hair here to make it appear more natural. Look at our vector scope. Notice how the cyan in the shot from these lights in the background are way too saturated with color. The farther out your colors are from the center of the vector scope, the more saturated they are. And you don't want your colors to go past this imaginary line if you connected all of these hue squares. Usually you don't even want to get that close, but there are exceptions to that though. So because I was going to use the sat versus sat curve anyways, let's lower the saturation or the intensity of color of the most saturated areas of our shot by lowering the right side of this curve and increasing the saturation of the least saturated areas by raising the left side. And this gets our trace on the vector scope looking way better and more balanced. I'm also noticing that his skin is just a little too saturated for my taste. Skin should be about 10 to 40% of the skin tone line if we connect the yellow and red hue squares. His skin is probably sitting around 40%, but it's looking a little too saturated for me. So by hopping back into the skin adjustment layer and lowering the intensity of his skin color, we can get his skin saturation to look more natural. And to stay nice and neat, let's label the most recent layer, secondary corrections. Let's add a little punch to our shot. This should really make a difference in making him and the shot look better and have more pop. So let's add a color wheels, and use the new magnetic mask. Select him, and deselecting the area that we don't want included by holding option and clicking, and hit analyze to track the mask. Now, if we raise the exposure of our highlights, we can brighten him up. And if you find that adjustments like this remove the contrast that you want, just lower either the midtones exposure slider or the shadows exposure slider to add that contrast back. Here we'll just adjust our midtones since our shadows are already very dark. And since we're still adjusting what we selected with the magnetic mask, let's click outside and do somewhat of the opposite. So let's lower the brightness of our midtones so it affects mostly the midtones and keeps our highlights and shadows closer to where they were sitting. Add some feathering to the mask so it's not such a harsh adjustment. And look at this difference. He is now way more of a focus of the shot, which is one of the things that we want to do when color grading. Direct our viewers' eyes where we want. Color grading is kind of like the cinematography of post-production. It has a powerful impact on your videos. We can also take the sharpen effect in the effects browser, apply it directly to the viewport, so we can then select what we want sharpened with the magnetic mask, hit analyze, and if I crank this up, you'll see what we're doing. This is obviously way too much. The Final Cut Sharpen effect kind of blows, so let's just adjust this to something very subtle, maybe only one or two. And we'll feather this to make it more of a gradual, less noticeable adjustment. You could call it quits here if you'd like, but I'm gonna throw on one of my favorite plugins to add a little cinematic flair to finish it off. The plugin is called Dehancer. This isn't sponsored and it's kind of expensive, but it does a solid job. So I used it to do a few things. I added some film compression to the shot, which emulates how film handles highlights compared to digital sensors. Basically, just compresses and evens out the highlights, kind of smooths everything over in your shot in a way that I think looks good. This next section makes a big difference, but it doesn't work for every type of shot, only for a very specific stylized look. So this print section allows you to make your digital image look like it was printed on a specific type of photo paper or film. So basically it adds similar colors and contrast that you would get from real film. As you can see, it kind of amplifies the look that we created and makes it look more matte for lack of a better term. 
But if this is too much for your taste, then forget about this step, but I kind of like the look of it on this shot. Finally, I added some halation, which doesn't really show up that much in this shot, and then some bloom. The bloom does a great job of achieving more of a dreamy glow for this music video. Color grading makes a world of a difference in how your videos look, and if you're still not ready to join the FCP Color Grading Masterclass, no worries. Give this free lesson a watch on how you can perfect skin tones. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.